Hey, it's Monica, and today I want to share with you a really powerful way to diffuse conflict in age-old arguments that you might be having with your partner. And I rediscovered this actually just this last week. I had first discovered it in the year 2000 when I read the book Conscious Loving by Dr. Gay and Katie Hendricks. And I found it to be powerful at the time with my relationship that I was in then. Um, but I forgot about it over the years. And then just last week when I was doing research for something else, I found it and I was excited because I found it to be just as powerful as I did then, if not more so because um, I was looking at it from a different vantage point and I could still see its power and with all the other background information that I've had from research that I've done and my interest in the subconscious mind I can just see why it works as well as it does and it also is very compatible with some of the works that I've drawn from in my other blogs by leading relationship experts so I'm excited to share this with you today I know that a lot of you can relate to this phenomenon in long-term relationships where the same fight keeps coming up over and over again with the same passion and conviction, with the same script, the same outcome, it just gets buried and then you bring it out again and really it never gets resolved. So I encourage you to try this next time you get into one of these fights or arguments um, or you could be you know, really preventative and just try it now before you get there again. Basically how it works is you're going to ask yourself seven questions and answer them for yourself but then share those answers with your partner. Now, during this process, I highly recommend that you do not engage each other. You just listen and alternate. So there won't be any crosstalk or arguments or even positive commentary. Just listening, alternating, and then moving through the questions. So the first question is, how do I feel? And this is basically just an opportunity for an I statement where you can share how you're feeling um, just using feeling words. You don't throw in any thoughts or interpretations, um, nothing about your partner at all. It's just as simple as, I feel sad, or I feel scared, or I feel angry. Not, I feel sad when you act like a jerk, or something like that. You don't want to slip anything in like that. Just sticking with the I feel, and then a feeling word. This will allow you in this setting, where you're listening and not cross-talking, to feel safe and just saying you know, how you feel, and it is a little bit vulnerable. But that's the whole point of this exercise, is to just hear each other. So step number two, after you've shared your feelings, is to ask yourself, what do I want? Because usually in these conflicts, there's obviously something that we're fighting for, but it could be actually connected to even a larger life dream that we have that we feel is frustrated, and that's why the stakes are so high, and that's why we keep coming around to it again and again. So just really think about what is it that I want in the larger scheme of life that this is attached to and... Um, can I really hear my partner share that as well? Sometimes when we hear our partners share that, we can realize, you know, they're fighting you know, hard for this, not because they're trying to be annoying or because they're stubborn or whatever we think about them. It's really because they have um, high stakes attached to something that's really important to them, and we can have empathy and compassion for that, and even if we don't really feel the same way. So then after you covered number two, you go on to number three, which is how does the past play into the present right now. So how is it affecting me right now? And in my opinion, as you probably know if you've been reading my blogs, you know, usually when you get triggered in an argument with your partner, there's something in the past that's getting touched, that's, that's filtering, you know, the current experience. So have you felt this way before? Is this something that feels familiar? What happened in your growing up years that is getting touched on right now that is affecting your present moment? And if you can recognize that, you can separate it out and you have more resources and skills available to you once you can recognize that. Question number four is, what do I get out of staying stuck? And this is a secondary gain type of question. So, you know, a lot of times, especially in high stakes intimate relationships, we're more invested in being right than we are in getting along. Or maybe there's a subconscious part of us that really feels like it's more important to prove to ourselves what we already know than to actually evolve in the relationship even though consciously that's not what we want. So, for example, you know, if we keep recreating certain experiences with our partner, we can say to ourselves, see, I knew it. I knew I could never get what I wanted out of a relationship, or I knew that people can't be trusted, or I just knew that this is how it always is. You know, something is getting reinforced for us that is really old. And so if we kind of, you know, pay attention to that and realize that there might be some other reason why, you know, some, something that we're getting out of this fight, it will help us let that go. Because a lot of times we're not even aware of it. Question number five is, what needs to be said? 
And this is the hard truth telling that we sometimes have to share with our partners whether we want to or not. This is the time to do it in a structured way. What do I need to say? And this could be something like, you know, I sometimes wonder why we got married or I don't want to be married anymore. Sometimes I feel that way or, you know, I don't like to be around the children or things that might be hard to admit. Um, this is the time to do it. And it might be something that you've admitted to yourself but that you've never shared with your partner. Again, just listen, no judgment, create a safe place, and you know, hopefully you can get on the same team. Question number six is what agreements have I broken? And this touches on what I talked about last week in my blog about restoring trust. This could be an opportunity to share something major that you haven't already told your partner, that you, uh, an agreement that you've broken, or it could be a way to just simply acknowledge um, tiny breaches over time that have gotten in the way of your trust in the relationship that maybe in the past you've minimized because you were feeling defensive. You know, this is the time to acknowledge it, own up to it, and allow healing to occur. Because if we feel vindicated or validated or if we feel like the other person is taking responsibility, it's easier to let resentments go. And finally, step number seven is what or how can I be of service? How can I be of service to my partner? And this really touches on the whole idea that we need to be on the same team um, and, you know, get out of this kind of conflict, me versus you, but really think about how can we take a step back and realize that what helps my partner thrive is going to help me in the long run as well. And whatever efforts I put forward in helping my partner reach their goals in life, even if those goals are different than mine, I'm going to get back so much more and the whole will be much greater than the sum of the parts. I think they, they ended on that one because it is such a great way to get on the same team and go into the usness place, which is so so crucial in evolving and shifting away from the, the gridlock that these repetitive arguments keep us in. So that's pretty much it. You don't have to do all seven at the same time. You can just do two or three or four or however many you, you need to do to get out of the place of conflict, shift your awareness so that your, your intention is now no longer to win, but it's to create awareness, greater compassion and understanding, and eventually the answers will come. You know, it, you might not get the answers right now, but that's not the focus so much as it is simply just diffusing through that gridlock. Now, if you have any questions, please feel free to email me. I always email back, and I always welcome your comments in my blog. Um, in the field below, let me know what you think if you try this at home. And good luck to you. Thank you so much for listening.